body language. I know his, uh, you know, his ability to get open, my confidence in him. Um, all those things come up. He gets open so quick. I think that's the thing about Julian, his explosiveness in the routes, in and out of breaks. Um, it's very comforting for a quarterback to see a guy get open really early in a route. Hello and welcome into Patriots Now. Michaela Vernava here with you. That's right, Patriots Nation, rejoice! Julian Edelman is back at last. He will suit up with the Patriots Thursday night against the Colts for his first real game action since Super Bowl 51 on February 5th, 2017. Ah, how we've missed this little squirrel. His route running, the unspoken chemistry between quarterback and receiver, the TB12 JE11 bromance, it's finally returning. And the guys inside the Patriots locker room are all sorts of pumped up about it. Oh, he just has great leadership, obviously, in his 10th year here. Um, you guys see it, full of energy, always. Julian's a heck of a player. Um, yeah, one of the things that you know you guys don't get to experience as much is that comic relief. Julian's there to ease the tension, but also make plays on the playing field. So it's great to have another playback, playmaker back out there. On the, on the field, he's a dog, and um, him bringing that energy is going to help us a lot. It's a great one. I mean, like he's, he's Julian Edelman. He's a he's a he's the leader of our room. While things are looking up for the Pats, the same cannot exactly be said for the one in three Colts. But remember the days when Patriots Colts was a heated rivalry. Tom Brady sure does. Well, there was a lot of big games, a lot of big games, especially earlier in my career, and uh, you know those Tony Dungy. T coach teams that were just, you know, so well, Peyton, obviously, and what he meant to that organization and uh, kind of the admiration I had for him. Now, allow me to refresh your memory on the things Brady didn't mention. Like, say, the fact that Josh McDaniels bailed on their head coaching job, or that the Colts were the Deflategate whistleblowers. Here's the crazy part. Since that infamous AFC Championship game back on January 18th, 2015, these two teams have faced off just once, week six of the 2015 season. A 34 to 27 win for the Pats, hallmarked by the Colts' hilariously failed swinging gate play. In more ways than one, Thursday night will be more than just another game. And while the Pats are getting Edelman back, they've got a wounded Rob Gronkowski. And the Colts are dealing with some serious injuries of their own. Let's take a look at the injury reports. Adam Butler, Josh Gordon, and Jacob Hollister, among others, were all limited in practice this week. As for the Colts, T.Y. Hilton has been ruled out of Thursday's game, and Adam Vinatieri is questionable battling a groin injury. They've also got three banged up cornerbacks, two of whom have already been ruled out, which could spell lots of passing yards for Tom Brady. Let's turn now to our Darren Hartwell with the fantasy implications of all of this. Thanks, Michaela. I'm going to come out of the gate this week with an unpopular opinion. I think you should sit Rob Gronkowski in fantasy this week. Uh, I know the general rule of thumb is that uh, you should always start a fantasy stud, and Gronk is a fantasy stud. But I think there's serious cause for concern with Gronk's ankle this week. And even if he does play, I think the Patriots will be a little bit cautious with him, especially with Julian Edelman returning from his four-game suspension. Speaking of Tom Brady's favorite wideout, I'm definitely starting Edelman in his return against a Colts defense that allowed 25 receptions to three Texans receivers last week. That said, I'm still sitting both Chris Hogan and Josh Gordon this week. I think the volume just isn't there for either player, so you're basically banking on a touchdown. I do like both Sony Michelle and James White as running back starts, as Indy is allowing over 100 rushing yards per game, and both players played big roles in week four. On the Colts side, things look pretty bleak, with T.Y. Hilton expected to miss this game. I think you're still starting Andrew Luck, though, and I also think Ryan Grant could be a sleeper play as Indy's de facto top wideout. And that's your Fantasy Football Minute from Foxborough. Thanks, Darren. Now, with so much going on, we haven't even gotten to Josh Gordon yet. The wideout made his Patriots debut on Sunday against the Lions, playing in only 20% of snaps, catching two passes for 32 yards, but feeling good about it. And I think the only thing right for me to do is take full advantage of it. I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. The guys here are great. You know, it's a real home environment, you know, and I feel as comfortable as ever here. It's awesome. So when will Gordon start having a real impact on the Patriots offense? Our Patriots beat writer Doug Kide weighs in during this week's mailbag. Hello and welcome to this week's mailbag. I'm Doug Kide. If you have a question for me, tweet at me 
at Doug Kide using the hashtag MailDoug. First question here comes from Joseph Martinez, who asks, with Julian Edelman coming back, even when Josh Gordon is fully healthy, where does Josh fit in on the depth chart? I think that he'll probably start near the bottom. He'll probably start, you know, number three or four on the depth chart there. But by the end of the season, if everything goes right for the Patriots, if Josh Gordon can stay healthy, if he can stay out of trouble, if he learns the offense well enough, I think that there's definitely a potential that the Patriots' top two receivers will be Josh Gordon and Julian Edelman. And you can't really do much better than that as far as the Patriots' offense is concerned. Second question here comes from ATG, who asks, wasn't Sonny Michel supposed to be more of a passing threat? He was. Sonny Michel was a very good pass blocker in college at Georgia. He was definitely catching more passes out of the backfield at Georgia. I think the Patriots are just trying to ease their rookie running back along right now because Sonny Michel did have some issues in the passing game so far earlier in his Patriots career. He's had some drops. He allowed a quarterback hit in week four against the Miami Dolphins. So I would expect James White to be the Patriots' top receiving option. But the Patriots definitely need Sonny Michel to step up in the receiving game just to add some unpredictability into their offense. Because right now, if Sonny Michel's on the field, Patriots are probably running the ball. If James White's on the field, Patriots are probably passing the ball. As I said earlier, if you have a question for me, tweet it to me at Doug Kide using the hashtag MailDoug. Great stuff per usual from Doug. Guys, we've got a ton in store for you on Thursday. Doug will be going one-on-one -on -one with Willie McGinnis. Matt Chatham will be coming to you with pregame analysis from Foxborough. It all goes down right here on Nesson.com. Thanks for watching this episode of Patriots Now, and I'll sign off with this. Quite possibly the best Twitter account around, Captain Andrew Luck. If you don't know about it, get familiar. Here's the latest inscription. Dearest mother, we have reached the outskirts of Boston. Our unit tracked the Patriot men by the smell of baked beans and their unique, almost always shouting dialect. Tomorrow night, we battle. For now, I shall take some squirrel oil and then target practice. Andrew.